Oh, someone has it. This is bigger than I thought. Welcome back everybody and or anybody. Christian with Nate Time for Fishing here. Not sure if you can tell by how sweaty I am, but it is hot today. Uh, definitely the hottest day I've fished so far. Don't know about quite the hottest day of the year, but it's pretty close. Uh, real temperature is 98, but with the humidity and everything, it feels like well over 100, I think about 110. Uh, still air right now, not a lot of wind, but it's supposed to pick up as the day goes on. Chance of some showers in about two to three hours, maybe four if I'm lucky. But the max I'm gonna be able to get out here is about three, three and a half hours. So I'm gonna have to make some quick work of this. I'm hoping to do a catch and cook today, but that all is dependent on actually finding some fish. Uh, it's about an hour and a half before low tide, and uh, we have a very low tide today. But without further ado, I'm just gonna get to fishing. Uh, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Christian, and this is Make Time for Fishing, but let's get to the action. Hope you all enjoy. Okay, so for those of you who are new here, my setup today is a 5 foot 11 toadfish convict rod with a 3,000 size spool, uh, Cast King Speed Demon Elite, nothing fancy, but it has a fast retrieve and good drag system. Uh, that's spooled up with 15 pound braid. And then I have about three feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader going to a half ounce sheep sticker pro jig. And uh, if I didn't say this already, and you're new here, <laughs> I'm going for sheep's head as I often do. And uh, the bait today is mud crabs. Uh, a couple of fiddler crabs made their way in as well. Have uh, a lot more than I probably will need with a short amount of time, but I got on a pretty crazy bite here my first trip out. So I'm hoping I can have a little bit of a repeat performance of that. It's about 11 feet down right here. Toadfish or no, nah, just sheep. <sighs> wow, that was big. I can't believe it came off. Let's try, because it's so calm right now, let's try free lining or uh, at the very least a split shot rig. Okay, I'm gonna try, see if I can get away with free lining, which is just the hook, no weight or anything. Then of course the crab. I believe I'm marking fish in here, but I think because it's uh, slack tied, they're gonna be really spooky about uh, any unnatural weight. So uh, a jig, would uh, definitely fall into that category. So I'm gonna try to see if I can just let this free fall in and if they'll pick it up. Oof, okay, I had someone messing with it. Good one. That might be my keeper. Wow. Holy heck. Let's throw him on the board. If he's uh, over maybe 15, I'll keep him. Oh, yeah. That's a 16. Cool. All right, I'm going to get this guy in the cooler then. Stay tuned. Well, officially got my keeper for the catch and cook. Thanks to the free line rig. I always love doing that when I can. It's just obviously the most natural presentation. It's difficult to do because, you know, it's so susceptible to wind and current, but when you have very little or none of both, like around slack tide, which is also when the fish get really picky and uh, can be spooky. The free line rig really excels then. Okay, let's try free lining under these docks. It's not a lot of space, so. And not a lot of water, so I don't really need to worry about having weight. It's 
like dead low tide right now. I think slack tide. I'm only in about four feet, so it's gonna be that or less under these docks. Oh, someone has it. A little sheep. Huh. <laughs> it's always fun when it actually works. I switch back to the uh, half ounce sheep sticker pro jig here. Tide should be just starting to come up now. Man, that guy was shallow. It wasn't very big, so I just shook him off. All right, a little time update. I've been out here for about two hours now. Bite has totally shut off the last 30 minutes or so. I have a little under an hour to go before I have to be off the water. I'm gonna see if I can get something going here. Tides should just be starting to come in. I'm starting to see a little trickle of a flow there. So I'm gonna revisit some of my favorite docks from the beginning. See if any of them have turned on more uh, with the flipped current because I was fishing them pretty much at slack tide before. Let's see what we can do. I have my keeper, so no matter what, I'm gonna be able to do a catch and cook, but I'd like to pad the stats a little bit, so to speak. Let's get back to those docks and see what we can do. All right, so the current has definitely started coming in, which is good. Should help turn the bucket back on. Check these spots real quick. bigger than I thought. <laughs> Loosened up because he was way in there. Oh, that's a big one, wow. Oh, oh, oh man. Okay, stay on, buddy. Stay on. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. He's got some kind of nasty looking growth on this. Oh, those are like barnacles. Wow. That is a big sheep's head. Okay, let's really quick throw him on the board here. See what we got. I think he's over 20. Wow. Gosh, look at the size of his mouth. Look at that nose to the front. Tail just over 20 inches right there, 20 and a quarter. Nice. All right. Get a quick shot with this guy. He went just over 20 inches. Uh, this is like, this is a big fish. The most interesting part of him is this. He has what well, looks to be barnacles growing out of a, a wound on his face. I don't know how well you can see that. That's pretty wild. Let's get him back. All right. Fish has been on ice, only kept the one today. I love this toadfish folding cutting board and a knife because I just keep it in my car for when I need to clean a fish. That way I don't have to clean it back home. Significantly easier. 16 inch fish is plenty enough meat for a Weissenized dinner. Usually get about 12 ounces of fillets off of one. I like to do the other side before I completely remove one of the fillets. That way I get kind of my guidance cuts while the fish is still, uh, for lack of a better word, solid. Not my best fillet job, but certainly not my worst. <laughs> Let's get the pin bones out real quick and we'll get on our way. 
All right, and then he goes in the bloody slurry. And the second one. Let me just toss all this in the water. Trust me, the crabs are gonna be eating good. It's the moment of truth, but not really because we've eaten this twice before. So full disclosure, this is stolen from Jackrabbit Philly in Park Circle. If you haven't tried it, you really should. It's an experience. But we went there with our good friend Sean, who was a gourmand. And uh, while we were there, he was like, this is really good. And he took mental notes and he recreated this from memory just by mostly guessing ingredients. And then he sent us the recipe, although it's more guesswork because he doesn't believe in measurements, apparently. <laughs> so he just sent a list of ingredients, so we had to remake it from that and guess amounts and stuff. So the estimates that are in the video are going to be very rough. But anyway, Elise is running to an event, so I figured I would real quick get her impressions, see how I did. Um, I like this one. Oh, man. She's killing me. I'll give me my own plate. What is this production? Cheap production? Okay. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the tartar would be fine by itself, but adding sourdough Texas toast to it, with garlic and herbs and all that. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm stopping the video here because I really want to eat this now. My mom told me I'm talking my mouth open again. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you try this recipe, please let me know and please consider if you're in the Charleston area checking out Jackrabbit Philly. 
I, it's not a sponsor or anything. I just really like the restaurant. I know. If, hey, if you want to sponsor me, it'd be great. I'd love to go back. <laughs> but thank you all so much for watching. Remember to make some time for fishing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.